It's important to not be robotic when you're practicing Spanish with native speakers. Now, of course, this video is tailored for more advanced speakers, even if you're intermediate. I would only recommend this if you're proficient enough to actually go out and practice with native speakers. What's up? My name is Dejour from Thrill Tienes. Your boy is here. And this video today is about smooth ways to end conversations in Spanish, as you saw in the title. So it's important for you to not come off as robotic and for you to not come off as rehearsed because depending on the context, it could come off as rude. It could come off as maybe disrespectful. Perhaps it all depends. And you'll see what I mean as I elaborate on some of these examples. So here are some smooth ways to end a conversation in case it gets dull, in case you're ready to go, in case you see you get a social cue and you see they're ready to go. And these are some things that I've actually implemented. So yeah, number one is pues te dejo. Pues te dejo. And that's like, well, I'll let you go. Like, I'll leave you. Like, I'll let you go. And I normally say, like, depending on the context, if the person seems a little like, off guard, if it's like a very short interaction and they're kind of short and dismissive, I'll say, pues te dejo, perdón la molestia. Like, sorry to bother you, right? Um, it's a great smooth way to communicate like, hey, like I understand you might have to go or you might not want to be bothered too much right now. So I will let you go. And it's worked wonders for me. They'll be like, oh, bueno, pues, uh, fue, fue una buena charla. Estuvo, estuvo bueno charlar con usted, something like that, right? The second one, okay, this one, I think I've only used this maybe once in a conversation. I, if if that, and I heard this in Costa Rica. It's voy a ir yéndome, voy a ir yéndome, and I don't know how to translate this directly. Native speakers, if y'all know how to translate this directly, me lo dejan los comentarios si lo sabe traducir exactamente palabra por palabra. But it's like a way of saying like, oh well, I gotta get going. Like that. That's the best translation that I have. It's just like a really. Not fancy, it's just a, a, a way of saying it where if you say it, native speakers will be able to tell like, oh, you've actually been putting in some work in this journey, right? So keep that one in mind. I've used that maybe once. The third one, now this is the one that I say at the end of every single video. So y'all, y'all know what I'm saying at this point. And that is nos vemos. And that literally means see you later. And I normally say like, ciao. I think ciao is like Italian or something. It's not even Spanish. It's, it just means like bye, but it, not even the ciao part. It's just nos vemos. And I say ciao because when I would practice Spanish, um, one of my greatest sources of conversation practice is actually at the university I attend. I live in a community where you could literally practice your languages every week. I'd go every week in the dining hall and there was one specific table where you go and you just practice and you just put in work for an hour. And I would hear that a lot, ciao. Or really, nos vemos. Nos vemos, nos vemos, and I would just use it. Number four, you could say, bueno, fue una buena conversación, fue una buena charla. Like, it was a good chat, it was a good combo, right? It was a good combo. And this is self-explanatory, like you acknowledge the fruit of the conversation, but you also, in a smooth, maybe indirect way, let them know that like, I gotta get going, or, you know, it's not as direct, but it's a very smooth way, like putting the conversation to an end, or, screeching the tires, so to speak. Uh, como que usando los frenos. Si, si, si tú quieres frenar, como parar la conversación, entonces tú tendrías que decir eso. Number five is, pues, ya me voy. And this is, well, I'll get going. Or I, I should get going. I don't know if this one is, it's, it's a little more direct. I guess it depends on the context. Like if, if you have a, a the, if the nature of your relationship with the native speaker or whoever you're talking to, it's kind of like jokey, like a joking, very playful type of thing. I think you could bust this one out because I, I can imagine like I'm talking to a native speaker. Let's say I'm talking to a dude from a certain country and we're laughing like, <laughs> and I'll be like okay, bro, de todo modo, pues ya me voy porque yo tengo que, o sea, regresar a mi mamá. Like I gotta get back to my mom and she got things to do. Like I can see myself saying it in that context. I, I picture it like if I'm laughing, you're goofing off with somebody and I want the conversation to keep going, but I kind of got to go. I said, pues ya me voy. You, you know, you know how black folks, like you go to somebody's crib, you black, I know Hispanics do this too. Y'all let me know in the comments. We'll go to somebody's house and then you be ready to go. And they be like, all right, I'm gonna head out. And then y'all walk to the car and you sitting out and you sitting in your car with the car door open and y'all still talking. And you be like, all right, I gotta head out. 
and it, it just it keeps going it's like it's, I, I could imagine something like that i got i got kind of off topic but that's kind of what that makes me think about number six and seven are kind of tied together it's just a different subject number six is te veo like the, te veo a ti te veo like i'll see you and then number seven is le veo they mean the same thing but te is informal and le is formal so te is like you would say that in the context of a friend or maybe your sibling or a close or, or a loved one that you're really comfortable with number seven would be like if i'm ending a conversation with somebody that i met for the first time and um an older individual a professor a business partner a manager right a client if a client for your business right if i live in a different country as an expat and let's say like i i interact with some people some stakeholders in this language you say like le veo like i'll see you and number eight is hasta la próxima vez and that's like until next time until next time but i i say i don't really use that a lot you could use that you could use that in a more professional setting you could also, I could add number nine. I thought it was just now. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Until next time. Or you could also, number 10, since I'm thinking of phrases with hasta, you could say hasta, and then you could say the day of the week. So if I just kicked it with my boy on Monday and we're seeing each other again Thursday, play basketball or something, I say, hasta el jueves. Okay, bro. Nos vemos. Hasta el jueves. Te veo. Juguemos baloncesto el jueves. Hasta el jueves. Like until Thursday. So. Yeah, just insert any day of the week, day, even days of the month, whatever. I'm sure that could work. And yeah, I'll end it here. Hopefully that helped. Make sure you share it with at least one person. Appreciate the support. And hasta el próximo video. Nos vemos. Ciao, ciao. You see?